ክዳኖም ቀሊዶ ማብ ጽርጊያ ወጽዮም እምን ምድር ባይ ክጅምሩ ሆሎ ውጥራዩ ኦ ተጸሊሉ ወይካ አናይ አምሩ ህማም ገሩ ዝባሃል Mental health issues are one of the main causes of diseases. Major depression is thought to be the second leading cause of disability worldwide and plays a massive role in suicide. However, not everyone is aware of what mental health really is or simply chooses to ignore it. I'll be exploring why mental health within the Habisha community is still a taboo with the help of different Eritrean and Ethiopian demographics. I had the chance to meet young Eritrean migrants Robin and Nahom and they gave me an insight on their journey to England and what they do to deal with stress or any burdens. Tu gozo dahani neru dahan ka ene bara marate u Hadi ge jami a ga mshe te khat tin tara de ami kan saat sho ata bela khat khatama tu gas na tu parking bara te marati wa ta asa ta hada gare khat ratsa tu saan marati wa ታርት ሳለና ገደ ዲስቲኔሽን ገደ ሪ እንዴ ዲ በቃ አንሳ ሆላን ትሄድ አንሳ ፍራንስ ስደትሲ በሐፈሻ ክንት ጽበይ ወዲ ነሩ ወይስ ምካለ ኾይኑ ጸምሕኩም ዛራ ወጥጻ ተደት አሞ ሄላ ሀፕቴስ ከመስል ካጂ ስናይ ባልጀጂ ምክንያት መጽሆለኻ እንዴ ሞት እንገለ እንደ ማራ ቀሊል ነገር አይኮን አብ አድፋ እንዴ ሆዋታ እንገለ ነው ሞት ድቃ ከመይ ወራ ተዓዲ ጥዑም ተኾነ ወራ ንሴፍ ንነፍስካ ተኾነ ዘሰይ ተኾነ ግን ማዓት ሐደ ገና ይደሉ ከማኹም መናሰይ ይወፉ ማዝቡቱ ዋድ ጭንቀት ዲዩ ዌስ ዝሆነ ዓይነት ነገር ዝሆነ ዓይነት ስትረስ ዲዩ ዌስ ዝሆነ ዓይነት ጭንቀት ዘጋጥሞ ሕጂ ክትሰምዑ ኸሎም ከመይ ይስማዕኩም ትፈርሑ ዲኹም ዌስ ከምዚ የመሪሽ ይብራኩም There has been a numerous amount of young Eritrean refugees that have sadly taken their own lives for many reasons. Osman Ahmed Noor was only 19 when he was found dead in London after fearing that he may be deported back to Eritrea. Him and his four other friends took their own lives within the space of one year. Do you feel like it's selfish for someone to commit suicide due to depression or anxiety, or do you feel like it's the fault of those that are like around them? I can't really say that it's their fault and stuff because mm -hmm. they're going through madness at that time. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it would be appreciated if like people around them mm -hmm. are supportive of you know the things that they're going through. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like for example, like if one of your friends in your circle is moving a bit mad, like in terms of like acting unusual, mm -hmm. depriving themselves, uh, stepping back from a circle, it's always good to just you know come out there and ask them like, you okay, you good, what's going on? Are you going through something? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And just approaching them, you know what I mean? And obviously, prior to this, you've told me that you've lost 15 friends. Yeah, pretty much 15. Yeah. To suicide. Yeah. How has that made you in terms of a person? Do you feel like it's made you stronger, or has it like put fear in you? In a way, I start thinking because some of those people that committed suicide are like real close friends I, I used to go to school with, uh, like I used to chill with on a daily basis. So I start thinking like if someone's that close to me is ready to commit suicide, like and I go, everyone goes through something. So I start thinking like if I go through something as bad as them am i yeah. capable of doing that to myself mental health can be quite misleading especially to the elder generation minorities as some choose to ignore it because it doesn't correspond with their cultural ideologies or simply because they aren't aware of it i had the pleasure of meeting learning disability nurse solomon and he broke down all things mental health into grinya better grinya akita um gletsele mental health in time uh mental health bemejemera betigrenya na ya amro tsegem 
ወካነ አምሮ ህማም ተባህሊ ዝብለጽ አብ ህብረት ሰብና እዝነ አምሮ ህማም ብዝተወሰነ መንገዲ ይብለጽ ሰባት ፈጽሞም ካብ ምቁጻር ወጻይ በጽሖም ክዳኖም ቀዲዶ ማብ ጽርጊያ ወጽኦም እምኒ ምድርባይ ክጅምሩ ሆሎ ጥራይ ኦ ተጸሊሉ ወይካ ናይ አምሮ ህማም ገሩ ዝባሃል እዚ አባሃላዚ ግን ብሃፈሹ ብስነፍልጣት ክሪ ይኸልና ግን እቲ ናይ አምሮ ህማም ንብሎ ነገር ብዙሕ ነገር ይደጣለ ሓደ ሚዛናዊ ዝኾነ ልክዕ ዓለና አካላትና አካላዊ ስነ አምራዊ ስምዒታዊ ማህራዊ ዝኾነ ወድ ሰብ ንኻባቢኡ ኸናውሮ ዝኽል ስም ኣለና ሚዛን ዝኾን ኣለና እዚ እዚ ኣርባዓተ ሚዛን እዚ ኣብ ኣካላትና ኣብ ዝዛናበሉሉ እዋን እቲ ናይ ኣምሮ ህማም ክመጽ ይኽል ማለት እዩ The common issue within the Habisha community is the clash there is with parents and their children Of course this is completely normal with all parents and carers of all backgrounds but to what extent How do you feel you can break the generational curses for the coming generation in order for them to be understood by their parents slash carers more um yeah so i think education is important like um educating yourself on how to identify certain things that you have like any issues any like any mental health issues that you have yeah. any trauma from your past um, especially for our generation before we have children as well so we don't have to like pass mm. that on and continue like buzzing the future generations of these things so mm-hmm. that's very important like maybe through even researching on like yeah. google or watching videos um, of, of like therapists that talk about these things um, maybe even just like black therapists if they don't <laughs> sort of trust the westernized yeah. ideas yeah. Um, and just being more open and talking about yeah. your family members yeah, yeah i was going to say that cuz um as it's so hard to talk about your mental health especially with your parents but just to have a to sit down and have an honest conversation that's a very big first step to do and i feel like if you can do that then it gets easier and even though like you even though like, they might not understand you but eventually they will and i feel like if you sit down and, ha- and have an honest um conversation about what you go through i feel like that can break that barrier that between cuz you will never know until you try mm. and some some parents can be very understanding so i feel like talking about it and just going out there that's like very yeah. big step as well so do you feel like um if you know there's obviously going to people out there not just within our community like let's say within minority communities you know they may associate mental health with being possessed or you know all crazy. of that yeah. crazy all that kind of stuff yeah. yeah do you feel like that's the point where they need to you know literally seek professional help even if like people in their friendship circle might not understand them. do you feel like that's the point where they need to be like look i need to see a therapist i need to see a whatever it is a counselor do you yeah. feel like that's the point or do you feel like they should try hard enough to even educate their parents within it too i mean like we shouldn't have to reach that point yeah like mm, even before yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah that you can still get help you yeah. don't have to see like like mental like um health yeah. solutions aren't just for like crazy people yeah now umro tsagam ab hibrat sabna ayzirabni haji kamtu zbalku hit na umro tsagam illa nitqso sabat fatsimom kab muqsar wotsai koynom kidanom mamqdad ab dega wotsi am nimidirbay ab dega tsulu ወይ ካብ ደገ ተደርበየ ማብዞ ጽሉ ዋኒና ወይ ሓሚሙ ንብሎ ሕጂ ምስምንታ ይዘ ተሳሰሩ ህብረተ ሰብና ምስወሎ ዶ ኢደ ተሳሰሩ ኦ ከምዚ ጸገማሎም ናይ አምሮ ጸገማሎም ዞም ገዛዚኦም እንድርተ ባይሎም ካመውሱ ወይ ይኽልከሉ ቦዋ አይትዋ ሰብ ምዞም ህማም አለዎም ይባል ንሱ ትራይ ዴ ኮነ ዋላ አካላው ጸገም እንድራሎ ሓደ ገዛ ናብነት ቆልዓ ናይ ምምሃር ዓምዝ ጎድሎም አካላው ጸገም ዘለዎም ኩሉ ድኾሎ ዋሎ ሰባት ዞም ለርኒንግ ዲሲቢሊቲ ንብሎ ኮሙሽ ግራድ እንድራሎም ካብ ሓደ ገዛ እንድርቶ ወሊዱ ወ ከምዚ ጸገማሎም ስለዚህ አይኑ ዋሰብ አብ ዘርእና ኸይመጸ ተባይሉ ካመውሱ ቦይ ይኽልከሉ እዚ ከም ዘመሰለ ልምድን ባህልን ስለ ጸንሐ አብ ህብረት ሰብና አውይሎም ክዛረቡ ላይ ደሊነ ስለዚህ እንታይም ከጎብሮ ስለሊ ከሐቡ ወይም ዝደሊ እኳ ዳ አብ ገለ ህብረት ሰብና ብለ ታብ ቅድም ጊዜ ናይ አካል ጸገም ዘለዎ ወይ ናይ ምዕባለ ናይ ትምርቲ ጸገም ዘሎም ሰባት እንድርኮይኖም ኩሎ ድኾሎ ለርኒንግ ዲሲቢሊቲ ንብሎም 
ቀልጥፎ ምንታይም ድገብሮ ሞይ አካላው ጸገም እንድሕራለው አይትንገሩ አይትንገሩ ተባይሎ አዋ ሁሉ አፍታድ ተወለዱ ላደምበ አውጻ ቢኖም ብጥሪያተም ኮሎ ይቀብሮም ነይሮም ንገዛ ረሱ ጭንቀት ዝፈጥር ነገራት አለው አብሕረት ሰምና አናብነት ብሊቢያ ይምጽ ብዙሃት መንስያት ብሊቢያ ይምጽ እንደ ሽግራ ይጋጥሞም እተዘጋጥሞም ሽግራ ታይዛረውሉ ነይም አብዝ መጽየም አነስ ከምዚ ገሮም ነይም ከምዚ ከምዚ ጸገም ረኸይ በይሎ ማይዛረውሉ ነይም ምክንያቱ ዘይፍር ኮይኑ ይስመዐ ሶሻል ሚዲያ ኢዝ ኦልሶ አናዘር ፋክተር ዘት ፕሌይስ አ ሂውጅ ሮል ኢን ሂንደሪንግ ሜንታል ሄልዝ ሃዌቨር ኢት ካን ኦልሶ ቢ ዩዝድ ኤዝ አ ቱል ቱ ሬዝ አዌርነስ ኦን ኢት ቱ I caught up with Mikhail who's one of the co-founders of online platform Airy Wellbeing. So tell me a bit about Airy Wellbeing when did it get started and what was your purpose with beginning it? Um, so basically it's, I'm one of the co-founders and I started it with my uh, friend the co-founder Ruti. Mm-hmm. Uh so I kind of started out of out of frustration on the lack of awareness and communication around mental health. Mm-hmm. So we are fr- so Ruth is based in Stockholm I'm based in London and we were just frustrated uh how young people were kind of suffering in silence mm-hmm. and a lot of the stigma that is attached uh around mental health and how difficult a lot of us find find it to kind of speak to our parents about it so we decided to uh run a mental health campaign to raise awareness on uh, Eritrea on my heart mm-hmm. uh we collaborate we partnered with uh, Dr. Jakob Teke who is a psychologist based uh in the US mm-hmm. uh to kind of have the more so obviously he has uh, experience but also the knowledge as a clinical psychologist is a clinical psychologist thank you <laughs> are you content with the state of mental health within the Eritrean slash Ethiopian community um no uh So basically just to finish up this story. <laughs> so we started we 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 ran the campaign on Eritrea so my heart but then we got all these DMs and comments where people wanted to really engage. So then we started the platform and they were being initially that was not necessarily the aim. Initially was there was just an intention to raise awareness. So once we started the real being campaign then people again started to reach out to us from different parts of the world and and just basically raising what you were saying like you know it's still too little uh, that is done within our communities about raising awareness what can we do uh, to kind of facilitate that communication um obviously a lot of people use social media especially young people so we found that that was uh, a good way to kind of reach out and let people know that they're not alone in their journey so this is one of our core mission with our well being to really kind of ensure that everybody knows that they're not alone in their journeys uh that there is help available to them and also not to feel ashamed to prioritize their own well-being and mental health because especially in our culture there is a, a lot of emphasis on self-sacrifice and you know you you almost feel privileged especially considering what your parents have been through mm-hmm. like you don't feel you are in the position to you know speak out about other issues so it's really just to encourage people to take ownership about their well-being and mental health so considering that you use um social media as a platform to obviously put this message out um how do you feel like social media hinders the mental health of young people in particular Yes. Um I mean social media could be a double edged kind of sword in the sense that for us it's been a tool where we were able to build a community to reach out to people who were feeling otherwise isolated. Uh but then of course there is the other side of the coin where you know a lot of people seek validation on social media, uh they suffer from low self esteem and that doesn't help because obviously you compare your lowest self with you know the highlights of other people's lives yeah. so we always encourage people to you know take time off uh we have been we've done at least twice kind of um a social media detox yeah. and we ask our community to you know to join us and to share the experiences on the other side of the detox we also share there is um an option on Instagram where you can decide uh, you can check how much time 
you spend on social media. When I check that, I just get so embarrassed. I'm like, wow. <laughs> Do I really spend? Even on iPhones, there's like a tracker that gives you like a weekly update on how much time you spend on social networking and that's I get so embarrassed. Yeah. <laughs> so it does encourage people to be mindful mm -hmm. about how they feel when they engage with social media, to be more aware. So obviously uh, if you experience grief then and, and all the news is about somebody passing, that might not be good for you, right? Yeah. So take a take time off. You don't always have to be engaged with everything with the latest news. Like you always feel like you need to catch up. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that's not necessarily the case. Do we, we always encourage uh, mindfulness and awareness, really. As we've already heard, there are many domestic precautions and solutions for mental health issues. However, seeking professional help is always the best alternative when you don't know what to do. Luam, who's a therapist, gave me an insight of a typical day at work. So tell me what a typical day is like for you as a therapist. For me, it's a lot of assessments, um, meeting people from different backgrounds, different walks of life, uh, different things in their life that's going on for them that's that's prompting these difficulties with their mental health. There could be anything from things like you know alcohol addiction to recreational drug use to family life events, family dynamics, mm -hmm. um, big traumatic events as well. So it's dealing with a wide range of things um, and obviously kind of thinking about what's the most appropriate form of therapy for them because there's different levels in which we will treat, which is cognitive behavioural therapy at the first instance. And if we feel like actually it's going to be a little bit more um, thorough or feel that this client will benefit from a longer session, so it will be kind of considering another step. Um, but that would primarily focus with thinking about what kind of symptoms they're experiencing. So that's going to be kind of physical symptoms, their thoughts, their emotions and their behavioural symptoms mm -hmm. and just thinking about how we can challenge the content of those thoughts and just modifying those behaviours okay. to kind of see an improvement in how they're feeling kind of emotionally, physically about things. Okay, so within our community, as you know, uh, mental health is still quite taboo, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that's just down to, you know, the cultural norms or the fact that there's a lack of professionals within our community? It's a tough one because I think there's a combination of both. I think um, the cultural norms is that it's something to be afraid of. Um, there's a lack of understanding. There's a lack of awareness about what it is, how it can come about. Um, and thinking about actually it can actually impact on anyone, almost anyone. You know, one in four people do experience uh, common mental health difficulty at some point in their lives. Um, and I think it's just that taboo of, you know, if we do have information and if we do have this knowledge there's this fear uh, a fundamental fear that actually will this taboo come to me will it knock on my door and i think very much especially in our community it's only the understanding that we, that happens for us once it does impact us directly whether that's going to be friends or family mm -hmm. but often in the community it's something that maybe you hear of from a distant kind of know of someone of someone of someone but it's also something that you know, you don't really know much about. Um, but I think generally the, the cultural norm there is, is this lack of awareness, a lack of understanding that's impacting on kind of how open we are to it. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, obviously, as a therapist, um, mm. for someone that isn't um, just ready to, for someone that's not just ready to, to um, seek professional help, you know, say if yeah. there's any domestic um, procedures that they'd rather take first, what's your advice for someone that would have you know, stuff like anxiety, um, you know, stress, depression, what would you advise them to do first? I think reach out, reach out to someone you can trust initially, have a way in which you can um, explore how you're feeling. And I think a lot of the time with, with mental health is not something that we say out loud, it's not the words that, that is that's kind of kind of make us feel so uncomfortable um, about how we're feeling about things. So I think mm -hmm. just having an outlet, whether that's going to be an activity that you know can help us feel better mm -hmm. with our day to day life, a coping mechanism, or having that someone that you feel able to speak to. Mm -hmm. and, and just thinking about actually, it's also about a readiness for change, a readiness for, for treatment. Mm -hmm. It's all about coming at a point in your life that actually, you know, 
having some form of contact with, with treatment services like the one I'm involved in is going to be efficient to some degree. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously thinking about how safe you can keep yourself as well. Because if we're thinking about thoughts about how we're going to end our lives or when it gets to that kind of level, we need to think about ways in which we can manage our risk before hopefully it comes to that level. So just thinking about keeping ourselves safe is the primary. Last but not least, um, what is the first sign of... Um, stress what do you think as a therapist with someone like yourself that examines people on a regular basis do you notice the symptoms or do you need to actually hear them that like do you need to like do you need them to tell you what their experience is or can you actually physically see mental health Mm, i think it's more kind of the client being aware of what they used to do before and what they're noticing now so there's always going to be that period in which actually you know, things are not the same for them. They're noticing mm-hmm. it with themselves. Mm-hmm. It can also be their family that is noticing them. I have a lot of clients that tell me, you know, my husband's telling me that I'm doing this now or my wife is telling me that I'm doing this now. Mm-hmm. So even having that um, kind of different perspective helps for me as a, as a clinician mm-hmm. to, to find ways to support them better in treatment mm-hmm. because even thinking about um, ways in which they see that their own behaviour has been changed and the way other people have that perception can actually help me and how I can ha- come into a holistic way to, to see me towards working that be different for them. Mm. Um, but I think also having an understanding that stress and anxiety and all these things that come about for us are, are normal to some degree. You know, mm. we're not expected to have periods in our life where everything's happy and everything's amazing yeah. that's how we know when we're when we're happy and amazing is when we experience those lows um so i think it's just having an understanding of the function of those times as well mm-hmm. that actually they serve a purpose and make us feel like you know this is a good time for me and, and this is what i'm excelling at um and also unfortunately shine a light on those things that perhaps are not good so good in our lives there mm-hmm. um so i think it's, it's a combination of things but i think also our expectations that we play on us place on ourselves is important in that sense because i think a lot of people have a perception of how they think their life is going to be mm-hmm. the expectations they place on themselves and you know life gets in the way at that at times and it's just thinking about actually when we're feeling this way it's just is an outcome of perhaps not meeting our expectations the way that we like. So having some self-compassion and some self-understanding in terms of what we need to do to work towards being the best version of ourselves, no matter how much that kind of comes away with our perception of that, and just thinking about working towards ourselves feeling in a much more happier place. It scares me a bit. Mm-hmm. In a way, I feel like, yo, I need to value myself as well. What they went through is, I can't even imagine what they went through. It's um, I can't, I, if I was there, I wouldn't have gone through what we're going through. I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to go to I'm a man, 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 I'm a